Hey everyone, uh, Tony Winston here for Jazz Piano College and uh, covering a really <laughs> messed up song, Moments Notice, John Coltrane. Beginning improvisers, uh, stay away from this one for a little while. Um, but uh, let me tell you a good way to approach this song to get the sound of it and the chord changes in your head so they kind of make sense. The best way to go through this song to just get that harmonic thing in your head is to use guide tones. Those are thirds and sevenths. We'll do that with the right hand and with our left hand we're going to play the root. All right, that's southern for root. Now E minor to A7. Don't worry too much about this change. It's the next one. That's the part of the 2-5-1. Two, 2-5-1. One. Two, one. Alright. Now it's, it's just a chromatic thing, you know. Sorry. All right, and if you play that enough, you'll kind of get the hang of that. And then there's a, like, it goes to the four chord and the flat seven chord. You know, you might expect it to go back to E flat or something, but of course it doesn't. Now, another thing too about getting through the harmony is to look for um, chord tones that are, you know, when you're changing chords like from this one to this one, look for some chord tone that's common to both changes. And of course, the melody of the song does that. If you take the third and the seventh, and there's the third up there on top, and then in the next change, it, it becomes the ninth and the thirteenth. See, the ninth, three, five, seven, nine, and the thirteenth of B flat. And it goes right into E flat. So when you're soloing, it's it's pretty advantageous to kind of use that. Now, other things you can do is like do like kind of a scale type of thing, like that. And you know that outlines the ho harmony pretty nice. You know, I still got my third and my seventh, and I started here on the eleventh and ended right there on the third it on the third again by using the thirds and the sevenths you know not only will you hear the changes better but your audience if you have an audience I don't know how much of an audience you're going to have playing songs like this but uh, the audience will hear the changes better if you utilize those thirds and sevenths in your improv so let's just go through the song with the thirds and sevenths first line our fake out change there and then move up a half step. Now look, it has a lot in common with our next change of D minor. See, that's a pretty smooth change from D flat to D and then up a half step. And we end in D flat. So in the first two lines, the, the main two five ones are the one in E flat and the one in D flat. See, it sounds pretty like a pretty typical jazz song there, but it's the little half step approaches to each one that makes it odd. And then it gets pretty uh, typical here. Uh, it's kind of like you're moving towards the key of A flat here. Three, six, two, five, one. Now that, that's thinking in the key of A flat. And then switch to the minor. And then if you go to the second ending, let's do the second ending first because it goes to the three chord of E flat and heads right to E flat. And usually there's a pedal tone there, and you know, anything works on a pedal tone. You can follow these chords, F minor, G minor, which is kind of like an E flat, F minor again, could be A flat, and then you double up on the changes, like that, give a little break, play a two measure uh, lead into the solo. And I plan that to come out on the seventh of the uh, E minor seven there back at the beginning of the song. So that was good planning on my part. Now, 
Let's, let's just kind of talk through it one more time, and we'll take the first ending this time. So we've got our little thirds and sevenths. If you put the third up on top here now, like this, it becomes the ninth of F and B flat. And this is like coming from the melody of the song. So that's useful too in your solo. Going now to the C minor, it's a little two five one. It says D minor seventh. You could use D minor seven flat five to get to the C minor. You know that's a typical minor two five one where you use the minor seven flat five on the two chord, some kind of an altered G seven. I usually put a little passing B7 in there or an F7. Now that's very typical stuff. And if you're soloing there, you know, you can go more outside. You know, you could play something, you know. You know, because it's a typical change. This change is not a typical change. So you've got to do something that the listeners can kind of get, get a grip on. If you did something real out, I mean, even if you're following the chord progression, let me see if I can do something that that is that would lose the listeners. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll use a bunch of altered stuff or something, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually kind of used correct scales there, but it was just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, mainstream enough, you know. Got to stake a little bit more mainstream to make this song really make sense. Okay, let's go through the, uh, the head uh, one more time using the first ending. I keep saying we're going to get there, but here we go. really seems like we're headed straight to E flat, which we kind of are, but it's like, we, well, we changed our mind. We'll go back here, and, and then we'll go. But do we ever get there? No. <laughs> we head right back to the beginning of the song again. So that the first ending is probably the most challenging part of the song, for me, anyway. Um, these little things in the beginning I can handle. And you know, if you if you cop with whatever line you play, if you just copy it a half step higher, it'll make sense to the listeners. You know, even if it's something pretty wild. Uh, that wasn't very wild, but let's see. Let's suppose I use some enclosures and stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. third of D flat and that works as the third of D minor what did I do wasn't a great line but if you repeat it a half step higher it kind of works Now, the real difference in the first two, two lines is, is when you end on the E flat there, you go to the four chord in the first line. When you end on the D flat here, you just go up a half step so you can set this thing up. Now, it really seems like we're going home. Change your mind. And then realize that you went the wrong way and you should really go to E flat. And then don't go. <laughs> go that way instead. So, you know, the uh, last changes now of the, uh, 
of the uh, first ending. You've got F and B flat, you go down a half step, and then you come right back to it. So that's, that's another thing to kind of keep in mind, you know. Going to keep these videos short for a few days. My main goal is to share the knowledge. So uh, thanks for tuning in, folks. And um, I have a Patreon page if you want to support the channel even more. And uh, if you want to make a one-time donation, I've got a PayPal link. And then just hit the like button, hit the bell, hit the subscribe. All that stuff also helps the channel. Thanks so much, and I'll see you again soon.